All right. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, I had a nice call with Mila uh, last, I guess it was last week, uh, in which she said, uh, hey, hey, Jerry, stop fretting about all the different moving parts that make an official looking podcast be podcasty and just like start the calls. Um, so that, I think that's great advice. And then in the spirit of do the simplest thing that could possibly work, um, the first call or two might even just be me interviewing a human uh, just one on one without worrying about audience, other people, other sorts of things, and just sort of getting into the rhythm of doing something. Um, so I, at this point, I'm just like, I just wanna pick a person and a date and do that. And then there's a bunch of moving parts that actually still need to be in place uh, in order to uh, get moving. But my problem is my brain has been consumed by several events that I'm part of like right now. And, um, and so, and so I, I would love some thinking through uh, who would be, uh, I think one, one question I'd love to, to ask you is, is who would make a great initial uh, few guests? And I'm looking at, I've got a spreadsheet where uh, I've got a couple of placeholders and, and other folks have put a couple ideas. Um, and my brain is on a little bit of vapor lock because I know a lot of humans, many of whom would make good guests. And my unaided recall on this is not going, going that well. So uh, any thoughts would be welcome. And uh, as a small side note, I changed the art on the website because I took some photos of uh, uh, Melina Bishop's uh, textile art. And so uh, I'll just share Believing the World page briefly. Boop, boop, boop. I'm just starting new. Uh, some some questions, yes, um, which I do not mean to make into overthinking, <laughs> um, but uh, so it seems like an, an inaugural person um, and, and you're just getting started. I, I feel like you would want to interview them again um, four episodes later or eight episodes later or something like that. Um, so do you want somebody well known, not well known? Do you want um, somebody deep and thoughtful about one thing? Do you want them broad about lots of things? So that's not overthinking at all. That's exactly where my head is. <clears throat> um, I'm thinking. Pro I, I, I'm thinking. Famous doesn't matter at this point. I'm thinking the dynamic of the call needs to work. Um, I love your idea of just vi revisiting them in a few in a few calls after sort of uh, figuring out more of what how the moving parts fit. Um, I think that's great. Um, I would love to have, so what, one thing I'm realizing is that weaving the world is, is, is like, how do you eat an elephant kind of problem? You only have to do it one bite at a time because any, any, if I, if I sit down with any one smart person, we're going to get just a little, little chop on, on the surface uh, in an hour and a half kind of session. It's just not going to go that deep. Um, so I think I need to pick something, a, a relatively narrow question to start with is what I'm thinking, is to pick something so that we take a small bite that's interesting and then go into it. And I know that the question will broaden out immediately into belief systems or other kinds of influences or other kinds of, of, of things that, that matter, right? Um, but, um, but I'm trying to find somebody who'd be happy kind of, kind of dwelling in that and yet can sort of bounce out to, well, I, I think this because of this, 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 and this, which were my personal experiences, a book I read, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, my, how my mom raised me, uh, whatever, whatever else it might be. Um, I'm, I'm imagining that that's like a really interesting, fruitful starting point. Does that make sense? Makes, uh, <clears throat> makes sense. <clears throat> it, it also, um, this is gonna sound weird, it sounds weird to me. It's not going to sound weird, maybe. Um, it, it seems like you want somebody well spoken, um, somebody who's. Uh, I, I guess you know for the podcast because part of the so another another thing just to observe is that the first episode is going to be something that's that helps grow audience for the next ones, right? So, um, uh, so to pick on myself real quick, um, I, I think I think really interesting things, and I would be a, an interesting person to interview, and I've got lots of you know depth. At the same part, 
the I, I recognize that when I say things, a lot of times I have to say them about four times different ways until they start making sense. Like they make sense to me, uh, but you know, somebody's, I, I wouldn't consider myself the best at well-spoken. Um, so in contrast, uh, in contrast, a person that comes to mind that I know you know and I know is David Weinberger. Um, David Weinberger is thoughtful and deep, and but he's also able to say the first time something that makes a lot of sense and something that sounds, you know, interesting and you know, meaty and thoughtful. Um, and I'm adding him to the spreadsheet. I'm going to put a link to the spreadsheet in the chat in a second. <clears throat> but I just want to think about that. Um, um, love David Weinberger. He runs really deep. And Weaving the World feels to me like a very Weinbergery project, right? Uh, small yep. pieces loosely joined. The information uh, actually, someone else wrote the information that was Glick. Um, uh, but but a, a bunch of books basically on on this theme. He also he also runs way deeper than I do on philosophy. Like he's really really good at that stuff, and I'm like just a just a rank amateur. Um, uh, the one drawback is he's a white guy, and I'm trying not to start on that path. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and 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 that's just like the only drawback. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. I, I was going to say, um, uh, um, white guy in the U.S. is kind of like the the nexus of the the wrong person to pick. Um, I was uh, my my starting point. My brain went to Angel Acosta, um, who is at the Garrison Institute. I did a podcast with him that was lovely, and he has one skill that I need. Um, for weaving the world, which is he slowed our conversation down. Yeah. Like in the middle of our podcast, he did some breath work and just had us like, like just way slow down and focus. And I'm like, oh, that I like, I need much more of that. And ironically, to go fast, we're going to have to go slow. Uh, it's the slowest, smooth, smooth as fast kind of thing. Um, and also, I think we might get places that we might just whip on past if it's just me. Um, I was in, so I, there was a mapathon last weekend, Friday, Saturday, sort of over 24 hours. And I was in a couple of the sessions. And in the second session, I was trying to get to one session, didn't make it, bounce, found my way to a different Zoom and ended up getting really enthusiastic about the conversation. And at the end, one of the participants was like, Jerry, like, you may want to just slow down that like, like you, you, you kind of like ate the space. And I'm like, I get that. But but what was said was like so juicy. And I was like, yes, we could like, that would be a great way to start doing something. And of the other three people on the call, I don't know that any of them were into just doing something. That was not why they were there. Yep. Um, so so I, I was like, God damn it. Uh, you know, uh, that, was a, I, I, that was good feedback. It was useful feedback for me. And um, uh, I wasn't in a space where that was, that was welcome, I guess. Anyway. Um, so, so who else? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, aside from your, your desire, which probably implies starting with a uh, European, African, or Asian woman, uh, who really inspired you in this thinking? Because that's another place to start. I mean, you're starting out something that's been important to you for a long time. And something or some things and some ideas and some people along the way really inspired you to move it forward who are those people what are those things that's a great idea and and actually <laughs> this is very funny you're you're reminding me uh <laughs> um hold on there we go uh do, 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 do. Here we go. Share screen. I think you're reminding me that I have a thought in my brain called Rex Fellow Travelers. And I started Rex in 2010. It's the Relationship Economy Expedition. Uh, this is kind of connected to my contrarians, people who make or made sense. And this is a really, really, really nice list to pick from. Um, these would be people, um, probably a lot of them. That, uh, as I was adding people to this thought, I wasn't considering nationality or any of those kinds of things. But like Dana Boyd, I haven't talked to in years, would be super interesting to talk to. Um, 
uh, Ethan Zuckerman, white guy, but runs incredibly deep. Um, let's see. And let me actually give you a link to this thought so that uh, you can go there on your own and browse around whenever you are so inspired. Uh, but these are all people who, uh, uh, and I, they don't all know me. These are some, some, uh, some of these I'm just deriving from um, their work, uh, but a lot of them I know. Uh, Mara Zepeda might be really interesting. She does, uh, she started the zebras movement. Uh, Marjorie Kelly visited Mondragon several times and did really interesting work there. Um, Nora Bateson might be interesting. She's semi-famous and um, has a lot to say about warm data, but might be might be a little narrow on that. Uh, Meg Wheatley would be interesting. I think she's sort of been interviewed. Let's see. Um. Oh right, Melissa. <clears throat> huh. I don't know Melissa Flagg that well, but her, but her work it comes out of security and uh, and technology and stuff like that. But um, she's super super interesting as well. Uh, Katerina Fake. Katerina Fake. Yeah. Um. um kind of an off the oh, uh, Bunny Huang. Or, oh my God, Bunny Wang would make a great interview. Uh, Let me add, it, you know, another good one would be uh, Naomi. Oops. Uh, Naomi who? Uh, <laughs> Naomi's got a, a bit of a... Um, Naomi Klein? No, no, nope, uh, she's a she's a Chinese maker. Ah. Um, not not the right person, probably. Audrey Tang. Audrey Tang would be good. Audrey, Audrey Tang, Tang that's, yeah, almost best so far. Um, uh, there we go. I'm, I'm Audrey so I'm, is real deep. So I'm thinking of Tim Wang, not Bunny. What was um? And Tim Wang would be real like uh, actually. Benny's Huang is spelled with a U instead of a W. This way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there we go. Um, hackers and a Terra Gonkai Chumbi with a Chumbi. Wow. <clears throat> A, truly a hacker's hacker, I think, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, so I was thinking of Naomi Wu. Um, she's, she, um, she's actually really cool, uh, but she has a presentation that will turn off some people. I'm, you just reminded me of somebody. Sexy Cyborg, got you. Sexy Cyborg. Yeah, um, you just made me think of Uh, Natalie Wynn, who does ContraPoints, who may not do interviews with other people, um, but who um, her takedown of Jordan Peterson, this right here, is the fucking best logical takedown of Peterson I've ever, ever <laughs> run across. Um, and her MO is to adopt the framing and style of the alt-right so that her videos do a lot of self-reference, a lot of uh, role play, a lot, there's a lot of set design and there's a lot of, there's a hundred times more production value in ContraPoints than I intend to undertake. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in particular, that's I think one reason why Daryl Davis is, is high on my list. Um, really interested in people who are trying to bridge the divides in the world because um, it feels like that's an important part of weaving. And 
she does it, and I'll share this link in our chat as well. Um, I gotta stop sharing for a second to uh, to find the chat uh, to find the link rather, because the brain is hiding things from me a little bit. Oops, didn't want to do it that way. Yes, well, I can do it that way. Okay, good. So here's the link to um, Jordan Peterson's takedown. Um, oops. Um, brain picker. Um, yeah. Although brain picker, I tend I tend to find to be lyrical. <laughs> but not always that useful more more aesthetic yeah and more aesthetic and captivating than actually like weavy i don't know um but but she runs really um the the, the way she um she like if you look at her oh she's she weaves right i think if that makes sense that, that you're right um so here's maria popova and in fact, I have a thought that I created long ago when OGM was just a baby um, of OGM test pilots, which would be exactly the kind of people you just described, um, like people who seem to be weaving information. Um, oh my God, Claire, that's interesting. Um, so Claire is a storyteller. I don't, I don't even know that she's posted many, th many things online, uh, but she's great. She's a huge character. Met her at the conference on world affairs in Boulder. We were on a panel together. Um, she would be interesting. But then other uh, other test pilots. Um, let's see who Deb Blum is. I'm not remembering. Oh, the author of Love at Goon Park. Oh wow. Um, also, um, huh. There's a, lot, there's a whole bunch of science writers that have gotten in my brain. That would be really interesting too. I mean, I'm inspired a lot by James Burke and his Connection series, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you should go back in time and, and which is him. Which is a form of uh, weaving, right? Because he, so Burke's method, here's Burke, uh, here's the Connection series in 1978, uh, which I have under books, movies, ideas that shaped many people's lives. And I'm one of the ones that was shaped by Connections. But under this, you'll find Ayn Rand, uh, you know, Atlas Shrugged and the Fountainhead. You'll find Engelbart's uh, Mother of All Demos. You'll find the Asimov's Foundation series, Star Trek and Star Wars, of course, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Like, like these are things that have that kind of, uh, that kind of energy. <coughs> um, Burke is a white guy, but he's been busy weaving the world in a huge way forever. And, oh, and... He has a project called the Knowledge Web, which at some point was using the brain. So here's K Web in the brain. He was actually a brain user. Um, and I think I've mentioned somewhere that I met him once. I got to shake his hand. I, I think he spoke at the Apple Newton announcement or something that's that far back in history. And I raced up at the end and shook his hand on stage and I said, Oh, oh I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm a fellow brain user. And he said, Thank you. Next. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Damn it. That didn't work. But you know, maybe enough time has gone by that that uh, it would work. But let me put James Burke on the list. He's clearly, um, besides being like me, he's perfect because he's weaving. And par partly what I'm looking for, and this is why. So I've asked uh, Mila, Amber, and Gio to um, to put together a, a, a an episode on something like regenerative culture or something like that on weaving in general. And it's going to be pretty emergent. Our, our problem is that um, two of them, Amber and Joe, are like slammed for time. Uh, and we're just having trouble figuring out when. But if it happens, you know, by the end of October, that'd be totally fine or start of, start of November. But, um, but I think that's actually going to, I, I'm very excited about that because uh, Mila is the most emergent person I think I'm speaking to in these, you know, in, in these times. And uh, that works really well for me. Uh, but I'm interested in, um, let me go back to uh, OGM test pilots for a second, because these are weavers. So Maria Popova, let me add her to the list. Thanks, Pete. I'm not a loyal enough reader of her blog. Um, maybe also Kelvy Bird. 
Um, Kelvin might be really interesting. She's a black belt graphic facilitator. Um, I met her at Davos actually when she was doing graphic facilitation in sessions. Um, she's been working extremely closely with the Presencing Institute and Otto Sharmer yeah. and almost all the visuals at Presencing Institute have that black background and gold and yeah. silver writing trademark kind of look of, of Kelvies. She's also a part of the Value Web, which is a larger group of people that are busy doing graphic facilitation, other kind of stuff. There could in fact be a follow-on conversation with other members of the Value Web. If she was, I mean, if she was into this, this might be a really, really um, interesting path into some of these topics. Huh. Uh, I'm thinking Kelvy's a really um, super idea here. Let me add her to the list. Um, because I think starting with someone who's also got a Jones to weave is a really good idea here. Yep. Um, let me go back to Rex Fulton Travelers. And the Rex Fellow Travelers thought is one of these slow build thoughts. These are just people I've been adding slowly after great conversations um, to the list where I realize, uh, and I, again, I don't know all of them personally, like I've never met Rianne Eisler, but her work just seems very resonant. Um, she wrote The Chalice and the Blade way back when, which kind of made her famous in 1987. <clears throat> and she cares about a lot of these um, similar kinds of ideas. And she is a contrarian who makes sense, which is the other thought I, I just kind of sort of mentioned, which is which matters a lot to me. Um, and these are people who've taken um, a different approach, a contrarian approach to issues in their domain that made a lot of sense. Oh. Participatory systems, radical help. This, so Hillary Cottom might be perfect. Huh. Huh. Um, relational welfare. Um, the problem on some, two T's, uh, the problem on some of these people is that um, I haven't read a lot of their work and I won't have time to go read a book and do other kinds of things, I think between calls, certainly not early on. Um, and I want to be better informed coming in to the calls, although that's not a premise of weaving the world and partly having people explain things works fine. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to some good podcasts that exist today and uh, makes a difference uh, when the interviewer is actually uh, well informed on, on the person's thinking. Um, social services are broken. Here's a, here is one of her talks. This is a TED talk that I annotated. Um, oh, so interesting. So she talks about the beverage report, which was pivotal in the UK. Uh, William Beveridge wrote a, a report saying we're killing people uh, that led to the creation of the National Health Service because in World War II, Britain nationalized uh, their healthcare system. During, as a, during the war crisis, and then they kept it as a result of the beverage report, et cetera, et cetera. And I know only the surface level of the story. Um, anybody who can go deeper into that would be super interesting, but these, this is kind of the way to, to start weaving things. So let me put, so I just put Hillary on the list, but she might be great. Other thoughts? Um, Bunker Roy. Oh. Um. He's, he's, I, I got to hang with him a little bit um, at, um, at an event and he's, the, the way he thinks is really interesting. Um, um, yeah. He founded the Barefoot College um, and, uh, and he was all about, um, he, he told some great stories about um, empowering women. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and how putting your energy into making women more effective is much more 
um, pays many more dividends than than the same thing with with men. Alas, she had a uh, or he had a um, rural electrification project uh, in India where um, his his trick was to teach the grandmas how to be the electricians installing the solar panels and the lights. Yep. Um, and he said, "Man, too lazy." Um, yeah. And the the grandmas were the ones who were invested in in the community and and you know uh, leveling up uh, technology I so you could that. have light at night you know yeah and, exactly and um do you know what i blame this problem on what's that timr <laughs> what's that <laughs> testosterone induced mental retardation yeah <laughs> yeah which is a fake thing but it's like mm, yeah like uh, you know, I read this piece on on Iceland, where during the during the 2008 financial crisis, basically men who were fishermen one day suddenly became uh, derivative traders the next day and almost sank the country. Yeah. And the women of Iceland basically saved the country and yep. and didn't didn't like castrate all the men, which was really nice of them. Um, but a few a few bankers did go to jail. Um, but I I I just. Yeah. Yeah. This take this uh, unfortunately through most of human history, I think TIMR is to blame for a lot of stuff. Yeah. Jerry, I yeah. would seriously consider one of the people who is a, a, a real weaver, like uh, Maria Popova or perhaps Kelvy Bird. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a I'm a paid subscriber to uh, Maria's blog and although I don't have time to read it as often as I'd like it's not like she's a content person she's a process person yeah. and I think it would be nice to start off weaving the world with a process discussion why weaving the world in whatever way you do it is important so one thing that argues in favor of Maria Popova is this thought right here. As you'll see, these are issues of brain pickings yeah. uh, listed alphabetically uh, because yeah. that's, the, that's the way I choose to do them. This is just A through D. Yeah. There's a yeah. scroll bar down here and you'll see there's more issues, more episodes of brain pickings. And in each case, so let's pick one at random, how to avoid work, the 1949 guide to doing what you love. In each case, in this in this case, I only connected it to the book, which I don't think I'd ever heard of. <clears throat> and it, you know, I, I listed, I connected the book to Career Guides, Meaningful Work, and William Riley, who wrote it, who was a career counselor. So that one's not the not that juicy, but but it, a good episode. I will um, how a jellyfish and a sea slug illuminate the mysteries of life. Darn it, Melis Medusa and the snail. Usually, I do usually I do more than this. Um, and, and actually, lately, I do more than this because I've grown more rhythmic and faster in my note taking in my brain. So uh, anything I loved, any video or book or post that I loved recently will be much better woven uh, into my brain. Um, so anyway, uh, having this to start with, and, and I, I will say that I've fallen off reading her pieces lately because they're long reads. Yeah. She, does not, she does not write briefly. Yeah. Um, and I haven't seen her interviewed any place, so I don't know her style or her voice or anything like that. But but I, this this makes me think that this would be a really great place to start because I've got her under well curated blogs, newsletters, and lists, picking someone's brain, Maria Popova, et cetera, et cetera. You know, here's Ira Glass on the secret of success in creative work. It's great, and and she's as you're saying, she's totally a weaver. Yeah. Well, I I've been following her for years. And I knew nothing about it. I just Googled her. She's Bulgarian, in fact, yeah. <clears throat> uh, which also places it a bit outside of the, uh, the North American context, which I understood was interesting for you as well. And I mean, she weaves in a completely different way than you weave. And we might even consider even a third type of weaving if, if one of the other people on your on your list is like that and have a three-way discussion about why people think it's so important to weave the world. Yeah, and my goal is for each episode of Weaving the World to have a shadow episode or several 
<clears throat> where we actually post process what the conversation was about yep. and to and to invite all of our community and whoever else feels like taking a swing at weaving with yep. whatever tool whatever tool they want um, and offer that into the conversation and part of that will be us weaving our work into one yep. another's ideas right um, which may only mean I add a link to someone else's mind map in my brain but that's a good start yep. right because uh, you know, in principle, there'd be a new a new thought under Maria Popova, which would be a thought for the episode of the conversation with her, and then from there would 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 sprout uh, a bunch of other kinds of things. Yeah. Um, okay. So Popova is a, and I have I have no she does not know who I am. I have no uh, links to her. So I'll um, I'll have to find my way. Another really interesting person. Um, just a hugely interesting person because he runs so deep is Sam. Hmm. Um, I'm going to add him to the spreadsheet and my thought um, just because he comes out of, um, he's a Tai Chi practitioner. He's been part of the GCC community. Stacy, you were involved in GCC some, I think, right? I still am. As a matter of fact, I mentioned the podcast to Stan last week. We were oh, talking Jesus. about. Damn. Okay. <laughs> and also, what we could do is it could be Sam and a couple other GCC members, maybe. I mean, it, it doesn't have to always be one person. Uh, it can be a couple people from a community uh, to sort of dive deep on where they've been, what they've learned, what they believe in, what they don't believe in. You know, I, and any one of those directions is really, really fruitful for me. Um, Stacy, any, any thoughts? Yeah, I just wanted to go back to the idea because you were looking for the first, yeah, you know, the first show, and we were focused on. I thought we were focused on like finding a woman, or yeah. as Hank brought up, would you be open to having two people? Because then you mentioned, you know, you mentioned some men that you'd love to have as well. Then you could, if you had one of each, that would be fine. But what I wanted to say is, you mentioned that you had never heard her speak before, Maria mm -hmm. speak before. Mm -hmm. I would really, I think it's really important to have heard somebody, even if it wasn't a long speak, you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, I totally agree. And one of my next tasks will be to go to YouTube and find a, a video of her being interviewed or, or what. Yeah. 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 I think that that's actually really important. And as Pete said at the start of this call, like somebody who, who speaks with clarity would, would be great. <clears throat> um, well, this is a nice building list. Thank you. This is really and some of these people I have immediate access to, um, and others we can find our way to. And every one of them I can ask for other recommendations of other people to bring into the show. So, yeah. Other thoughts inspired by the conversation so far? Uh, question do you want one episode to build on others not necessarily the first building the second and the second building the third but the first coming back to the fourth and the second coming back to the fifth uh, that's another interesting way to weave your first series together you're making me think of the book i'd never finished which i'm sure pete has finished um <clears throat> girdel escherbach Oh yeah, yeah. Didn't finish it. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're tough. making me think that 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 a thing I could actually do is I could make the I could I could create a canon of ideas uh, through the podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. where they kind of touch every third call or every eighth, or I could yeah go up a minor chord. And I I know no music theory, so I'm totally back breaking you know doing this poorly. But um, but actually, it's a lovely idea because. I think that um, I think that this notion of coming back um, first of all, what I'm realizing story threading for unfinished is that there are some common threads across the interviews, partly because it's a common theme for the conference, but partly also because uh, a bunch of people who are good thinkers are often thinking about, hey, how can we just get along? Like like what what should society be shaped like? How do we structure a society? Where do we go? And once you've done that, you're 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 in you're in the same thicket uh, of, of thoughts, uh, maybe from extremely radically different perspectives or, or yeah. entry points, but but you're in that thicket, right? Yeah. Um, and so just just from that perspective, and then 
the reason I don't have like 20 or 2000 brain files is that for me, everything is deeply intertwinkled, um, which might be the, the, the mantra of the show or something like that. I should, I should pick two or three quotes like that, that don't all come from white guys um, that, that are basically, um, and I've got a thought, um, I have a, a thought I, I like a lot called global unity. Uh, where I collect up things like that. <clears throat> so I, I like Hank's idea and uh, it doesn't have to be a canon, but if the episodes all weave together, you've got to win. Um, so I think I, I think oh. it, it would be cool to look back after eight episodes and yeah. and say, see, this thread weaves through all of them. So yes. Totally love that. I'm going to, I think Maywan host still alive, pretty sure. Um, so there was this interview that I apparently loved because I wrote excellent on it. And this is, these are the, the she's a scientist, uh, clearly. Um, and this is really, really interesting. Quantum coherence maximizes both local freedom and global cohesion. Um, Huh. Um, so this conversation is kind of way beyond my pay grade, but just the kind of nutrient um, that I would love to swim in. Um, oh, I know who else would be interesting. Uh, let me just add. Um, I'm going to, uh, now I just have to remember her name. It always swings by. She would be under uploading your mind. Um, Martine Rothblatt. <clears throat> um, cyber consciousness. Um, actually working on longevity and uploading like like doing serious work really smart um huh anybody have thoughts of plus or minus i'll just add her to the list and uh natalie wind did i not put her here There we go. And let me just connect this back up to Natalie Wynn as well. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to, it's funny. I, I have conversations now and then where I have this feeling like, oh my God, we're on the same journey. Wow, this person loves doing this weaving thing and then i forget who those people are like they like the i have a lot of exciting conversations and they've receded into back into the back enough in my memory that i don't remember and if i didn't connect them to rex fellow travelers or one of those thoughts um uh, unlikely i'll find it in my notes the way the way i'm sort of normally taking notes um hank thank you for finding a yeah, I lost the link Popova to the interview. first one, but uh, I just Googled Maria Povera on YouTube and you had lots of different things. Cool. Um, well, that's plenty of, I feel like that's a rich field of, of um, possibilities. So thank you for the brainstorming. Um, and when 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 do you plan to uh, to do the first interview and the first that's podcast? A, that's a great question. I actually sort of just need to. Partly, it's subject to whoever I invite to join me schedule because I'm uh, at this point. At this point, I think I'm not set on having a, a time schedule for when the episodes actually run, but rather being opportunistic and setting them up for whenever. Um, at this point, partly I talked with Marie Bierde yesterday. And she was like, do the simplest thing that could possibly work. So yeah. not trying to corral an audience to join us, but rather just doing the interview. 
uh, and the weaving so that it's that's also less confusing for whoever winds up watching the episode uh, and then posting the episode and then, then inviting a group of people to do the post processing um, episode uh, and and the closest I've come to language for that is behind the scenes or behind the curtain or something like that um, but basically the shadow episode and if you like what to call what to call <clears throat> the weaving episodes that are that are afterward you know we're fixing it in post um, what's a what, what's nomenclature metaphoric or otherwise that would make that would maybe make sense for for naming those the weaving of episodes. They could be the weaving episodes, although I'll be weaving during the interviews some, hopefully not so much that it's intrusive on the conversation, but, but kind of what I want is pair programming over content in some sense, right? Uh, that the way I'd love to be able to handle it is that um, whoever I'm talking to is kind of squinting and looking at the things that I'm busy listening and, and adding to my brain um, as we talk and that that generates new things like, no, 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 don't do it that way. Uh, you know, it really uh, it's, it's, it's connected the other way or, or whatever, um, behind the threads. Ooh. Um, uh, um, cause normally this would be bonus content or the making of, it could also, you know, the, the usual, the usual framing is things like uh, the making of or um, other kinds of stuff. Um, or, and and um, uh, Marie is really not fond of the big fungus as a name. She loves the metaphor. She thinks metaphorically it's really rich, but she doesn't, she's not that crazy about anything called the fungus sort of being involved. <clears throat> I, I really like it because it's funny and memorable. <clears throat> and metaphorically really, really rich. Um, and fungi are in the air. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but like the fungus thing is happening all over the place in medicine and new fabrics and yeah. uh, re re bioremediation, I don't know, all over the place. Did you see the uh, <clears throat> the link to the exhibition about fungi? Uh, I haven't I had a chance. This morning I and going on now <clears throat> in Berlin. <laughs> haven't, haven't had a chance to follow it, but totally excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and did I relate that, I, that, that two years ago here, um, uh, near the Portland Zoo, there was a fungus festival, a, uh, a mushroom festival. <clears throat> and um, it wasn't a shopping arcade where you could buy mushrooms. They were, um, there was a, a octagonal room where they had put tables in sort of star shape in the middle. Uh, picture foosball sized tables full of soil. Six of them, I think, each of them packed with fresh fungi that had been found somewhere nearby clearly in the last day or two although you could keep them in soil they would have lasted a little longer but fungi don't don't stay fruity that long um, and they were beautiful and they were incredibly different it, 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 and i panned uh i panned my camera across a couple of them but I, back then i was using like a lomo filter and everything so they look a little odd um but incredibly beautiful and i missed the talk by a mycologist who uh um, is like the, the the local dude who's big on that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, having a having a just a talk about mycelia and fungal metaphors would be really interesting. And partly, yeah, I'm trying to find other people who are excited about weaving the world, uh, even with other tools like. Um, I've been watching a couple of videos about the cult of Rome and obsidian versus Rome and, and uh, the guy link your thoughts, uh, Pete, that, that you mentioned, uh, I was watching some of his stuff. Um, some of them wind up, I, I think maybe this is how you become a YouTube celebrity with a following, but they wind up being a little bit doctrinaire about their methodology. And it's like, here's my workflow. And this is, this, this is like workflow. And I'm like, I'm not that interested in here's my workflow. I'm really interested in um, how does Obsidian help you weave the world? That would be a great conversation, right? That'd be really interesting in how somebody's actually done it and to wander through their map as I'm wandering through my map to add some of their links to my brain. That's like really, really um, exciting to me. That sounds like a fun, a fun conversation. Um, I, 
And so I just need to pick a, a date. Uh, but as I said, it's contingent on who I invite. So I think my next task is to write uh, Daryl Davis and Maria Popova and Kelvy Bird. Uh, let me just look at my list again. Um, um, Angel Acosta, I think, would readily join a call and be up for exploring. Um, I think he might be really lovely to have early in the in the queue as well. And maybe David uh, Weinberger can make an appearance as the first white guy. Because <clears throat> I love him. He's really, you're, you're, you're right. He's just uh, like thoughtful. He's thoughtful at the level. Um, the, the only thing I predict will be an issue will be he, him saying, no, 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 I'm not, not like the guy you need on this. I'm not smart enough or, or whatever. And I'm like. Yep, easy prediction. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, so where it says self-deprecating in Webster's or whatever, there should be a little portrait of David Weinberger next to it. He's like the, the master of self-deprecation. Um, cool. I, I, um, and I've got it. I must go to a different call at the top of the hour. And you've been lovely to co-think with me on, on how to do this. Um, what? So in the spirit of do the simplest thing that could possibly work, um, what other kinds of things need to happen soon? Pete and I are going to talk about automating some of the workflow because I went, I went and looked at a Jim Rutt show. I think I shared this with you all or some of you. Uh, I went and listened to actually read the transcript. Let me just screen share on this. Um, so Rutt has his own podcast. In episode 140, he interviews Robin Dunbar about his new book, Friends. Uh, which is this book, Understanding the Power of Our Most Important Relationships, uh, which just published. And, uh, <clears throat> and so here's Dunbar, who is famous for the Dunbar number. And it turns out now there's the Dunbar numbers because he's refining his, his whole idea, uh, which is interesting. I mean, it, it maps actually really well to Christopher Allen's post long ago about, hey, humans have different kinds of numbers that have different effects on how group dynamics work. Uh, but this episode of the podcast was really rich. This, this, this was a very fun weaving experience for me. Um, and so one of the things that I ended up adding to my brain was the seven pillars of friendship, which I think I did show in one of our OGME calls recently. Um, and here he says, hey, if you share the more of these seven pillars you share with somebody, the stronger your friendship is likely to be. Um, this runs against diversity. And, you know, had I been on the podcast, I would have started asking questions about their approach to diversity because toward the end of the call, they were a little bit kind of dismissive about, about diversity and, and its role. And I think it gets really interesting because this basically says growing up in the same place, speaking the same language, having the same education, sharing the same moral political point of view, all of this militates against diversity, right? But for, but for friendship, so goes the theory. That's interesting. And I think pushing that a little harder and going places would be cool. So I, I say all of this because I think the, 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 the minimal bar, this is not a minimal bar, but the low bar for an episode of a podcast is now to be something like this page, which is the page on Rutt's, uh, on the jimruttshow.com slash Robin Dunbar, which has episode 140 Dunbar on friendship. Here's how you play the episode. And then... Um, this is basically the cover of the, the intro and cover with a picture of Dunbar. And then if you click on episode transcript, there is a different page that opens up, which has a lovely and uh, not perfect, but very, very good transcript that says who's speaking, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The transcript is not connected to the links. So I think in here, uh, I thought there was a page also that, that they had created with uh, some links that were, were referenced in the podcast, but I'm thinking, I'm, I think I'm thinking of somebody else's podcast, but I think episodes are going to wind up needing some of these kinds of things. And the more this is automatable, the better. Um, is how I'm thinking about it. 
I just put a comment there based on uh, the story you told about uh, in the hackathon, people telling you afterwards you swallowed the space. Uh, personally, I think you've got more to say than <laughs> lots and lots of people who, uh, who talk, but you do want to balance. Yeah. So uh, you also have to make certain that your, uh, your conversation partner doesn't practice it. So I could imagine you'd want to practice it maybe with Alice, maybe with someone else uh, a couple of times uh, before you do it. Um, well, I can always just do it. And if the episode fails somehow miserably, I don't have to publish it. Um, That's true. Yeah. So, so putting the work in to do it is, is, is fine. Any one of these can, could actually be an episode. Um, but, I, but, but yeah, and, I, and I'm, I, think I, I think I need to couch the invite and I need to approach the conversations a little more slowly. Um, I, I, so I, pacing timing is, is apparently an issue for me because we're about to test for a, a, a level in Aikido. My sport is Aikido and I'm, yeah. I'm testing for second Q on November 8th. Um, and one of my vices in Aikido is I go fast and slow. Like I'll do a piece of a throw quickly and then sort of stop or pause or whatever. And really what you want is measured pace. You just want measured pace. It looks better, it throws better. Um, the whole thing works better. You preserve your posture and balance and all of that. So I think this is kind of like that. It's, uh, it's just like um, uh, measured pace with room for occasional flurries of excitement. Yep. Uh, you're muted, Stacey. Yep. Do you have the question that you wanna start with or is that gonna depend on who you, who you get the guest? Well, Totally depends on who the guest is. Yeah, um, and it'll—I think it'll be a version of, "Hey, what does?" I mean, an easy place to start is, "What does weaving the world mean to you, and how do you practice it, and what do you wish it would be?" That—that's that, a really simple place to start. Um, a very different place to start is, "Hey, how do we fix monocropping in the world, or whatever?" I'm, I'm, I mean, going into any one of the multiple technical or uh, or societal grave questions we're kind of facing to fix the world because i'm i'm trying also to approach people who have i'm i'm hoping also to put on the tour of people we visit um people who've got really promising solutions to the world's ills i mean there's another thought um uh uh, this is another uh, happy hunting ground, I think, for people to go visit. I've got a thought called Promising Solutions to World Crises and Thorny Social Problems. <clears throat> and now my brain is beach balling. Promising young women. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah. So here's um, rethink. And, and some of these sub thoughts are entire sort of, you know, rethinking the welfare state is a, is a whole, uh, whole world here. But partnerism, for example, is a, uh, an interesting concept. So that's uh, Rianne Eisler's word kind of. Um, commoning is another aspect and that's um, David um, Bollier's work. Uh, David Bollier would probably be fantastic. Yeah. He, um, he has such an enormous body of work uh, but and also really rich communities and all that. I'm going to add uh, David Bollier to to the spreadsheet <clears throat> and to the potential guests list. It would be lovely if when I did this gesture in the brain, if this name was popped into the spreadsheet. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? <laughs> Instead, I'm doing double entry, but there we go. Um, any other thoughts, suggestions? Uh, yeah, uh, by chance, uh, last week I was uh, interviewed for my first uh, real face-to-face -face podcast. And it was physical, face-to-face, -face, in a recording studio. The environment that the studio created was excellent. We sat about a meter and a half apart uh, you spoke into a really good microphone, which slowed down your voice. So it sounded just like a radio voice. 
and we just had a terrific conversation. Didn't stop for an hour and a half. And that's something about creating uh, what the Japanese call the ba, the, the shared context. So however you do it, and I'm assuming you won't be face to face in a, in a, a nice, uh, comfortable studio, just concentrate in advance on the ba that you want to create to share with the other person. Um, thank you. Here's uh, Ba. Yeah. It's Nonaka, and here's Ba. And and uh, learned by watching some, or reading actually some uh, Dave Snowden <clears throat> that Kinevan, uh, the name Kinevan and the idea of a formal framework was in fact a competitive, a competitive move against Ba, uh, because he was like that's really cool. Like, like they've got, they've got like this really great framing that goes back, you know, richly into Japanese culture and, and uh, history. We need one. So, so uh, that's where Snowden sort of dipped into Welsh uh, culture and language and found Kinevan. Um, yeah. But it's, it's pretty cute. But uh, yeah. Ba is, I think, part of what we're trying to create here. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, Ba is a, Ba is actually, um, important to what in fact i have ba above open global mind as a whole oh yeah yeah right i have it uh, uh, i have o ogm under we're weaving a global brain uh we need better curation organizational memory collaborative sense making global brains stuff like that yeah Cool. Yeah. Um, I've I've seen a lot of 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 face to face uh, conversations on the Dutch television. There's an excellent series six times a year every summer, six weeks in the summer. Uh, a uh, the the interviewer uh, selects six people, and those six people spend three hours talking about their ideal television night. Uh, and they introduce lots and lots of, of clips from whatever they think would be fantastic to see on their ideal television night. And the, the thing, yeah, Sommerhasten, exactly. And it's, only, it's, it's only here, Hank, because you've mentioned it before. Oh yeah, okay. And there's such a difference in the dynamic that, that, that's created between the different hosts and the different guests. And it's impossible to anticipate whether there'll be a click. And if there's a click, it's fantastic television. And if there's no click, it doesn't matter how fascinating the guest is and how wonderful the clips are, it just doesn't work. And it's painful to stay there for three hours, but it, it, it can be done, but it really, you know, it, it, it needs a kind of, uh, what do you call that? Uh, what did Alan Watts call that empty something? Uh, an empty, empty mind maybe? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you step in, one of the problems with the present Dutch interview, who's awful, is she steps in with a whole agenda of what she wants to accomplish. But mm. in the past, there have been interviews who stepped in with a kind of empty mind and let a conversation emerge. And that that's such powerful uh, television. Love that. Um, most of you have noticed that one of my favorite MOs is to bring people together, have a... Have a a kind of a question in the air and then just see where the conversation goes and, and follow what, what emerges, which I love. Or in the Thursday check-in reverie calls, just to, you know, just to say, hey, what's up? What's up in your head? Anyway, I, I've got to bounce to a different call. I thank you greatly for, for this. This yeah. has been super helpful. Really um, good. good. More luck. soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao.